What's up guys, CS back here with another installment and you guys are watching my main card picks for Strike Force Diaz vs Cyborg. Alright y'all, I'm looking forward to maybe three out of the four fights on the main card. The second one really annoys me, you'll find out about that later. But let's get on to the first matchup and it's, it's between light heavyweights, Hodger Gracie and Trevor Prangley. Alright y'all. Now, I'm a huge Hodge Gracie fan. Some of you guys know that I am a fan of what he does as a grappler in terms of de deck core. Like, this guy is the most decorated grappler ever. 10 time world champion in whatever division he chooses to compete in, usually super heavyweight. And then he is a three time absolute division champion, which is ridiculous because sometimes he fights people. You know 40 pounds heavier than him something like that like there's some big dudes there and he's not exactly a small guy either you know when he usually grapples he's around 220 ish um yeah no weight classes in absolute so you know what for him to be the king in the absolute division means he's the best in the world so he's a rating champion so in terms of grappling this guy's on top of his game now his striking has also improved if you guys caught the kevin randleman belt I gave him the first round for just jabbing for the majority of the first round. And Kevin Randleman had a little answer for it because if he got too close, you know, he could get submitted if Hodger was close enough to bring him to the ground. Now, it eventually happened in the second round. So, you know, that's saying something. He somehow got to the ground against a Division One wrestler in Kevin Randleman. Now, Trevor Prangley, his opponent, very good hands, decent power, decent shin, Decent takedown defense, good wrestler. He's not entirely great at anything, but he's good at a lot of stuff. Solid fighter, hasn't exactly looked good as of late. He actually recorded his, what, last victory in his last fight against Keith Jardine. Keith Jardine does, did not look good in his last few bouts. He's on like a five fight losing streak. So for Prangley to only escape with a split D, I think that's saying something. Um, Prangley didn't look good against Tim Kennedy. Tim Kennedy basically was really aggressive, got the takedown, did some ground and pound, then eventually got his back for a naked choke. It was that easy for Tim Kennedy. I think it's that. I think it's gonna be that easy for someone like Hodger Gracie. Hodger Gracie, he's not an idiot. He's a ten-time world champion. He'll figure a way to get this down to the ground real early. I think he does it in the first round. I think he keeps Prangley at bay with his jab. Prangley gets impatient, eventually needs to do some damage in the medium range striking game. Uh, he does it, but Hodger Gracie closes the distance when he comes in, somehow gets us into the clinch and works for a trip takedown. And I think that Hodger will be able to submit him from there by getting his back and going for a rear naked choke. So I'm going to say he does that mid to late first round. Hodger Gracie, rear naked choke. All right, y'all. Now, this fight, the next one. This is the one I'm not looking forward to, guys. It is between heavyweights Herschel Walker and Scott Carson. Let's take a look at Herschel Walker for a sec. Two-time Pro Bowl running back. What, three-time All-American Heisman Trophy winner. Fifth-degree black belt in Taekwondo. Not exactly the best criteria for MMA. I don't know. He's 48 years old. He's bored. He's retired from football. He wants to do something. So he's picking this up as a hobby. I respect that. That's cool. But since this is just a hobby to you, Herschel Walker, I think there's a lot of guys who really want to make long careers out of this, and you're simply not going to at 48 years old. So for you to be on this main card, I think, is a travesty. You know what? If someone is going to buy this card, it's because they want to see the two title fights above you and not your old ass. So you know what? If Scott Coker thinks Herschel Walker can help with ratings with one of his big cards, I don't think he is. I don't think that there's a market for Herschel Walker fans here. Like, what are they gonna do? Order it to see Herschel Walker? Like, I don't think this guy has a hardcore underground fan base, does he? I don't know. But if, you know what, if Scott Coker thinks that he can help with ratings, you know what you should have done, Scott Coker, is put him on the card for tomorrow, the show MMA card that, you know, the show MMA cards that Strike Force puts on that no one likes, even no one watches. If anything needs ratings, it's those cards. There's a number of guys on those cards who, you know, deserve to be on the main card of this. You know what I mean? They really wanted a heavyweight bout here. They should have thrown on Daniel Cormier because he's the best heavyweight available. 
that's not in the Strike Force Heavyweight Tournament in the next card. So, you know what? Since he's on the show MMA card tomorrow, he's available to fight tomorrow. I think he'd be available to fight four weeks from now. So, I think you guys made bad matches there. I think you should have threw Daniel Cormier on that card. Or maybe even Daniel Cormier versus Herschel Walker. So, like, we can end this dude. I don't know. That's just what I, I'm thinking. You know, Safdeen Woodley, I think that would be awesome to put on this card. But, obviously... That's why Strike Force in minor leagues, number one, they don't put matchups that people want to see, and they don't put the best people against each other. It's kind of hard to when your league is freelance, but you know what? That's why the UFC has gained so much success. So a good fighter comes there, he's staying there. You know what I mean? Uh, and he's going to fight all the other good fighters who come there because they ain't going anywhere else. That's why, you know, they're the best. Sorry. But as for this fight, we have Scott Carson. Now, Scott Carson hasn't recorded a victory in 10 years, so that's saying something. That's saying something. Wouldn't be surprised if Scott Carson was as old as Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker is, what, 48? So Scott Carson, I wouldn't be surprised if he was in his 40s himself. Um, last victory was 10 years ago. I'm 19 years old. That was half my life ago, essentially, so that's ridiculous. This guy has to be that bad. Apparently, they're throwing him to the wolves in Herschel Walker. You know what? Um, I say Herschel Walker TKOs him in the first round. It happened to him last year because he made his um, return to MMA, Scott Carson, last year about seven months ago. And he got TKO'd in the first round, I believe. Didn't even see the fight. Didn't see any of this guy's fights. I'm not going to do that. Don't need to do any homework on this one because I think there's enough criteria to say this guy's probably going to lose if he hasn't tasted victory in 10 years. Herschel Walker tasted victory a lot more recently. And, you know, off that criteria, I'm going to say that's what's going to happen. Herschel Walker, double leg takedown, ends up getting mount from the guard and then TKOs him via punches. So that's what I'm calling, and I'm going to say Herschel Walker does that in the first round. You guys can tell by my tone, I don't care about this fight. All right, guys, this next matchup I'm really excited for. It's a co event. It's for the Strike Force Middleweight Championship. Obviously, we have the challenger on one side with this Robbie Lawler against the champion in... Ronaldo Jacare Souza. Uh, Jacare, let's talk about him first. He was the best grappler in MMA until Hodger Gracie got into the sport. That's about it. You know, this guy is the cream of the crop. Uh, besides Hodger, you know, you're not going to get much better than Jacare. This guy will submit you if he gets it to the ground. So that's about it. And yes, his striking has improved. His technical striking looked awesome against Tim Kennedy, where I thought Tim Kennedy would have his number. But you know what? He even drew blood from Tim Kennedy. And he won four out of the five rounds in their title fight. So for Jacare to win that, big ups to him. He really impressed me. And I think his takedowns have improved as well. Um, I've seen him practice, and he looks unreal. And then we see someone like Robbie Lawler. Good takedown defense. It could be better. I think Jacare can take him down. But, um, you know, if he can't, I think Jacare, although his technical striking has improved, I think he's in the world of hurt because Robbie Lawler, will be only a matter of time before Robbie Lawler knocks him out if this thing stays standing. I do give the technical striking edge to Jacques Ray because Robbie Lawler isn't exactly the most technical striker at all. As a lot of people picked him to beat Babalu, that didn't happen. So I think that, um, you know, Robbie Lawler has some things to work on. Don't think we saw any of those things worked on in the Matt Lindland fight because Matt Lindland fought like an idiot. But, you know what, I'm not sure if we're going to see it worked on in this fight. I think Jacare exploits the decent takedown defense of Robbie Lawler. I think he finds a way to get this thing to the ground. I think he will pass Lawler's guard, get this thing into side control, eventually get Robbie Lawler's back and wins via rear naked choke. So I'm going to say that happens in the first round. All right, guys, moving on. Let's get to the main event. It is between Nick Diaz and Vangelisa Saborg Santos. And this is for Nick Diaz's welterweight crown. Yeah. Should be decently fun. Not a fan of this matchup because I don't think Cyborg deserves a shot. But guess what? Who else can you give a shot to considering the welterweight division in Strike Force is pretty depleted. Kind of like how depleted it is in the UFC where GSP just kind of ran through everyone. But here, welterweights, like, you know, they're scarce. Like, who is there? Jeromskis, who got bumped down to show him in May. 
we have like Nick Diaz, KJ Nunes is sometimes a welterweight. Apparently, Scott Smith had to become a welterweight to bolster the division. Then even Cyborg Santos, they've asked him to move down again. Like this guy had cardio issues at 205, had cardio issues at 185, and he's probably having issues at 170. We didn't see those issues because he obviously knocked out Jaromskis in the first round. So if you guys caught that fight, you know, a lot of people critiqued him on the cardio issues, but guess what? We didn't see any because, you know, he came out aggressive shoot box style and, you know, put Jaromskis away early. So what can I say about that? Um, yeah, definitely. This guy needs work on his cardio. We haven't seen it. I think the only way he wins this is early because I think this thing hits round three and forward. I think Nick Diaz will pick him apart with the technical striking that Nick Diaz has. But Evangelista, Cyborg Santos, very good kickboxer, technical kickboxer, uh, power in both hands. Obviously, he's bringing down a lot of power from uh, being a light heavyweight at one time. And yeah, good top game, good Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, haven't exactly seen his bottom game myself, but I can't imagine it is better than Nick Diaz's bottom game where he can submit you from you know his guard because he is a Caesar Gracie brown belt. Now, Nick Diaz's game, you know, good top game as well, can submit you from there, top or bottom. Also, a very good technical boxer. We saw that in a KJ Noon's bout. He outboxed the boxer in KJ Noon, so uh, big ups to Nick Diaz for avenging his loss. And then, you know, for me, his biggest asset is his gas tank. And yeah, this guy can go uh, three to five rounds with anyone. So Nick Diaz, you know, I think he's going to look to keep someone like Cyborg at bay. Cyborg's going to want to move in and out, uh, doing some striking and kicking combinations. And I think Nick Diaz is going to know that with his, uh, jo his jabs and keeping him at bay with his technical boxing. I think Nick Diaz and his reach should uh, pay dividends for him. I think that's what's going to happen here. And I think he's going to not knock out someone like Cyborg. Cyborg's pretty tough, but I think he's going to, you know, keep him at bay for five rounds. I think Cyborg's going to look really tired in maybe rounds four and five. And I think that uh, Nick Diaz might even win a 10-8 round there and maybe finish him. But I'm going to give Cyborg's chin some credit and say that uh, it's a UD. So I'm going to pick Nick Diaz in this fight. I think he's going to keep him at bay with uh, the technical striking, outclass someone like Cyborg there, and uh, win via unanimous decision. So that's my pick to win uh, this bout. And yeah, I think Nick Diaz retains the welterweight championship. All right, guys. That about does it for my main card picks for Strike Force Diaz versus Cyborg. Hope you guys liked them. Hope you guys enjoyed the event. Yes, I'm doing this preview really, really early. Sorry, I go back to school on Monday. I'm going to be pretty tied up for next upcoming weeks. New semester, I'm in college. I should be pretty, pretty tied up and stuff. So, you know what? I'm going to try to do the videos I want to do next week or two weeks, two weeks from now. I'm going to try to get them done um, this weekend. So again, I'm sorry about that because you know what? Changes might be made to the cards. I might have to update some things. I might have to make some new videos. If that is the case, you know what? I'll try to do that in my busy schedule. And um, you can rest assured if there are enough changes made to a certain card, I will be making a new video for it. And yeah, it's gonna be bitch, but I don't want that lingering in my mind. So I hope these cards kind of stay the same. But I am pretty sure they are adding about to the Strike Force DS versus Cyborg card in the main card like they usually do so yeah again guys sorry for making this so early but that about does it for my picks hope you guys liked them if not just tell me why you guys are welcome to comment or video response in any manner possible yeah just do your thing guys i appreciate all the support subscribe if you like what you see and thank you again take care